Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. I put out a poll a couple days ago about what you guys wanted to see and this is the one you voted on. This is how to transpose. Now I'm not going to get into every single permutation of transposition and every single key and everything, but I'm going to show you the ways that I use when playing saxophone and the way I teach when playing saxophone. To me, there are really two main useful ways of transposition. One of them is by numbers and one of them is by learning your instrument in a different key. I'm going to get to that second one a little bit later in the video, but let's start with the first one and what I think is the most useful is by numbers. Basically what it is, is you apply a number one through seven to each note of the song that you're playing whether it's a written melody or you're even improvising or you know a written part in your song whatever key you're playing or whatever song you're playing apply the numbers one through seven obviously adding sharps and flats where you need to and you just approach it from a number based system not an exact note or an exact key based system for example I'm gonna use a song I've never been in love before this is also a really good one to start transposition with because most of the entire melody is diatonic to the key that you're playing in, except for like one little chromatic note here. Let me just first play the first A section of I've Never Been Loved Before in the key of Concert B flat. So I would just approach it as 5-1 three four one seven six seven two three seven six five six one two six five sharp four five all in the key of concert b flat that way i start hearing the intervals and i start looking at how the relationships of those intervals and those notes to the original key in a number system that way i can then take those numbers and apply them to any other key that i want i'm not sure about this but i think having perfect pitch might hurt you in this case because you always hear something in whatever color of the key it is. You know, I don't have perfect pitch, but I know people who do. And I think it might help me more because to me, the key doesn't matter. And especially in the number system, it does not matter to me. So let's take that same first A section, the same numbers. Let's take it in G flat, concert G flat. <laughs> You see, to me, those two melodies that I just played in B flat and G flat, they sound the same to me. Yes, they're obviously in different keys, but because I don't have perfect pitch, I don't, I don't have that color uh, recognition or, or whatever that associates them, I'm not gonna pretend like I know what that's about. To me, those sound the same. I can just hear the intervals in the melody as a number-based system, and that could work with anything. Now, obviously, it's much easier on a melody like this where it's basically all diatonic, it's not moving that fast. But try it out, you know, try this number system um, and how, how you can relate it to different melodies or different parts you're playing. Now you might say, yeah, but what if you're playing like something that's super chromatic or whatever, and, and then, you know, if it's gonna be too fast for the number thing, you might wanna start practicing in uh, other keys, which is what I'm gonna show you in a little bit. Now, along with transposing written music and written melodies, you can also transpose the chords in this way. In this song, it's, you know, one, six, two, five, one, four, three, six, two, and so on. I, I think people, use that number system more than they use the Roman numeral analysis of that. They use that more than they do with the actual notes of the melody, I think. Uh, let me know if you if you uh, do it the other way or whatever. But I think people have used the numbers more and they're more comfortable with the numbers when talking about chords as opposed to talking about the actual melodies. Now to me, if you can transpose the chords that easily, you can do the same thing with the notes. Obviously there's gonna be more notes and it's gonna be faster, but it's the same process that gets you from how the number relates to the key you're in, then just shift that to the number of the new key. Same numbers apply, same thing with chords. You also have to think about why you're transposing something. You know, if you're using it just as a practice tool to get better at transposition, sure, try these different methods. If you're using it because you have to play a song with a singer in a weird key, these numbers can really, really help out because you're not stuck to one finger pattern or one key. Just as you practice all 12 major scales, like the finger pattern of all 12 scales, it's good to think about the numbers in relationship to one key and then really apply them to all the keys so you're not always stuck thinking in concert B flat or concert E flat or whatever, you know, easy keys there are. To go further with thinking about why we're transposing, as a saxophone player, you're playing a transposing instrument, the alto saxophone, baritone saxophone, or E flat, which means when you play a C on these instruments, it's an E flat concert or E flat on the piano. Soprano sax, tenor sax, those are in the key of B flat, so when you play a C on those instruments, it's a B flat concert. I think it's really important as a jazz musician of any instrument 
to be able to read concert key. Not only just read chords in concert key, but be able to read charts in concert key. And that can mean up to really fast, really difficult stuff in weird keys concert to be able to transpose to your instrument. I think that is very, very important. One of the biggest reasons I think it's important is that in a small group setting, if you're a horn player out front, you're usually the only non-concert key instrument. If you're playing with piano bass drums, guitar bass drums, any rhythm section instrument like that, those are more than likely gonna be in concert key. Thinking about it logically, you know, it's much easier to just print one chart for the entire band. In fact, for my own band, I've only ever printed concert charts, I've never done a saxophone transposed chart. Also, with all the other bands that I play and all the small group bands, I always tell them I just read concert key. So they know now that they don't have to write a saxophone part. If they write just a lead sheet for the rhythm section, I can always read that. And trust me, it really helps. And uh, those of you have reached out for me for gigs said, oh, I might have to transpose some parts. And I always say no. And you're like, whoa, I've gotten some good feedback recently that says, man, that's like a dream for me because I don't have to transpose these parts for a saxophone player. And all these other people always ask me for this. And I say, man, make it easier. Make it easier on the band, make it easier on the, the band leader. They have other things to worry about. Learn concert transposition. As an alto player, I also think it's important to learn from B flat to your instrument. So I think it's good from concert to alto, from B flat to alto. So you can read a tenor part, a trumpet part, a soprano part, whatever. The other way is true as well. I think it's important to learn from concert to B flat and from E flat to B flat. Now I'm obviously only playing alto in this video, so I'm only really talking about how do we get to uh, E flat instruments like alto. And this all brings me to the next way of learning to transpose and it's something that I just kind of did on my own a long time ago and now it's become second nature just like most other things with playing an instrument and that is learning the instrument in a different key. Here's what I mean by that. If you hand me a concert chart, my brain switches and I don't even think of what the actual transposition is anymore. I don't go, okay, so I see a B flat so I have to play up a major six or down a minor third or how many half steps is that? I just see it and I play it and and not even by numbers. I literally, when I see a B flat on alto, you know, I'm reading a concert part, I think one, two, three. So I literally just read this, I put the saxophone in a different key. I don't think of one, two, three as G anymore. I think of that as a B flat. So it gets a little confusing, but if you just train yourself, and there, I don't really have a great way to do this other than just read nothing but concert charts for as long as you need to, or read nothing but B-flat charts. So I'm gonna demonstrate playing in different keys right now using Charlie Parker's Coco, based on Cherokee, the beginning of his solo. I'm gonna first play it in the key that's written, and then I'm gonna think to myself concert key, then think to myself a B-flat chart, and I should be switching, switching my brain, switching my fingers, everything when I'm playing a new key. So here it is in the original key that's written. <laughs> Fine, that's what's written there for E flat alto sax. Just say that same chart and the same notes written in front of me were a concert chart and somebody says, hey, this is a concert chart. I would no longer think of, okay, how am I gonna relate this back to alto? And how am I gonna play this up a six, down a th I just think of the new key that's there because I've played concert charts so much and now that first note, instead of it being in F sharp, which it is written F sharp, it's now this, which this is now F sharp for me. I don't think of this as a D sharp anymore. So here we go in concert key. Cool, same thing now with a B flat chart. If you said this was a trumpet chart or a soprano part or tenor or whatever, I would now instantly think, boom, that first note, it says F sharp. This is F sharp to me now, no fingers down. Here we go. So I'm not thinking of how those keys relate to one another. I'm not thinking of an F sharp is now a C sharp here. I literally see F sharp and that's what I play. Or if it's, if I'm thinking concert, if I see F sharp, that's what I play, you know, D sharp on the saxophone. The best way I think to do this is to just literally play nothing but concert charts or B flat charts or whatever, whatever key you're trying to transpose to or transpose from. Just play them exclusively. Basically, you have to train your mind to not see the F sharp there as this finger, to just see the F sharp as what it is, it's an F sharp. Or see the A not as this, but it might be this or it might be whatever. Now, can I transpose every single key like that? No, I've only done those three keys like that. So, or well, on this instrument from, if I'm playing alto, I've done from concert to alto like that and from B flat to alto on tenor, I've done from concert to B flat and from E flat to B flat. Um, because I, I try to practice efficiently and I try to practice things that I'm actually going to use and actually gonna help me. If you wanna learn literally all 12 keys the exact same way and, and do that, hey, that's great, then you know you can 
play anything. For me, it was most important to just learn the saxophone in three different keys. Um, so I'm not, you know, playing exclusively in E flat or exclusively in B flat or whatever. The funny thing about this is there have been times when I start transposing by accident. I'll see an alto part, but I'll read it as a concert part. And I'm like, why does this sound so weird? Because I didn't even realize that I was transposing it because, you know, I may have been playing a lot of concert charts earlier or whatever. So, so you got to just make sure you know what key you're in, but basically tell yourself I'm in E flat and B flat and C. Now, if you never have to ever read another part other than your own E flat, yeah, sure, sure. Maybe just use the numbers or use it, whatever. But then you got to think to yourself, why are you even practicing transposing anyway? I'm practicing transposing not only to just be good in different keys and to be able to play charts and improvise and play melodies in different keys with different people, but also because I'm making it easier on other people. If they're like, hey man, I wrote this quartet part out. I only wrote it for soprano. You only brought an alto, no problem. Hey, I wrote this for alto originally, but I think it might sound good on soprano, but I don't have a soprano part, no problem. I'm trying to be as well-rounded of a musician as I can, and I'm trying to teach other people to do that as well. Don't just be stuck in a hole of one way to do things and have to say on the gig, oh, sorry, man, I, I didn't bring my soprano, so I guess we can't do that song. Like, that's a drag. You should be able to play it no matter what. So I hope this video helped you in some way. I know it's not a it's not a really big how-to, but it's just kind of explaining what I do when going about transposition. If you have some other tips on transposition, leave them in the comments below. If I got something wrong, leave it in the comments below. I love having a discussion. Please subscribe to my channel. It keeps you notified of all the videos I have, and I have new ones coming out every single week. Thank you to those who have subscribed recently. I know I have a lot of new people to the channel, so welcome and thank you very much. Also, check out some of the other videos on the channel. I have a lot of how-to videos, some just playing videos, gig videos, and some fun, smooth jazz ones as well. Take care, and I'll see you at the next video.